game as we move forward. Um, but the bottom line is we still have the opportunity to attain our goal and pursue a Mountain West Conference Championship. We are 1-0 in conference play. We are 1-0 in conference play. Um, and it will be a 1-0 mentality as we move forward. We, uh, we worked uh, yesterday. We had a good Sunday, good Sunday practice after a long travel to get back late. You know, in the Sunday morning, um, the team came with great focus and energy. Um, they're excited to uh, get into conference play and get moving forward. We, through the course of the season, we've learned a ton already. Everybody knows that. Now it's time for us to be able to move forward and, and learn from our experiences and grow. And that starts with us, you know, as, as coaches and as a team together. Um, and the commitment we made together yesterday to move forward, and it showed at practice. Again, coming off a long travel and getting back early in the morning. The team practiced extremely well yesterday. Um, working on obviously the things that we got to do a better job of and have more consistency, which, you know, in this game always starts with the level of discipline we have, you know, off the field that carries to on the field and our ability to execute at a consistent level. Um, we talked about it last week and going into the game in terms of third downs and on both sides of the ball and being able to be more efficient, um, to continue drives as an offense. At times we were efficient, um, at times we weren't. Critical times, uh, you know, uh, we, we threw the ball well. Um, we can continue to build off of that defensively on third downs last week. Leading up into the fourth quarter, we were doing a good job, but as we spoke about after the game, we gotta, we gotta get a stop on third downs. And that comes down to us as coaches, making sure that our player's in the right position, and then make sure they understand how we're gonna execute those situations to be able to get ourselves off the field. Build a level of consistency you know, within our special teams. There's, you know, we've got a fair amount of young guys playing on the special teams that are growing and giving us an effort. We will continue to get them um, coached up, and as we go through these games, we'll continue to see the improvements out of them to create a higher level of consistency you know, on our special teams. Andy, 519 yards of offense, seven players got passes, did it with two quarterbacks. You know, what, what encouraged you the most about that? It was your highest output of the year. How we did it as a team, you know, we spread the ball around. Mad Dog went in there at the end and led us on two drives, which we've known all along. We got, we got two capable quarterbacks. Uh, they both have their positives. They both do things that, um, they both do things well. And because of that, you know, this week in practice, we will um, allow both of them to get reps uh, with the first team, and we'll proceed. We're excited to see that in practice. And just uh, put out there some of the stats of what we're able to do and using both quarterbacks. And so for us as a team, it's finding, you know, the right mix of what is going to allow us to be successful, allow us to be more consistent throughout the course of the game, um, allow us to get on schedule. Uh, and to be able to stay on schedule and be able to uh, get to the things we want to in the game plan. And so as we go throughout this week, we will build a game plan that uh, will allow for both guys uh, to play. And as we go through the week, uh, we will see you know, where that efficiency is uh, throughout the course of our uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday practice. So are we going to make that that there's an open quarterback competition now? Yeah, Mad Dog is going to get some reps with the Blues. But, um, you know, again, there's things that Taylor it does really well that a lot of people can't do. And this whole team is extremely supportive of TG and what he's done and what he's capable of doing. Um, I'm extremely supportive of TG. And obviously, uh, we made a decision in the game uh, at the end there last week to put Mad Dog in because we've seen what he's capable of doing in the past game. Um, so. Love the com the competition, you know, that that we have. Uh, I love the fact that these two guys are um, guys that support each other, uh, guys that are going to help each other, and we'll find the right mix. This isn't if we use two quarterbacks, which we plan to in this next game. It wouldn't be the first time that it's been done. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't see a problem with that. It's what's best for the team, and it's what's able for us to be efficient. Throughout the course of the game, uh, we've proven, uh, you know, that we can run the ball. We've proven at times that we can be efficient throwing the ball. And for us, 
you know, as a team, as a staff, as players, to bring that together. That's the most important thing. How do you, in the new era of college football with the transfer portal and everything else going on, how do you, as a head coach, have to weigh what's best right now for the team to win with what the effects of that may be down the road based on the decision you make? We're, yeah, we're worried about this week and this week only. To be honest with you, we learn from the past and we move forward into this week and what is the best thing for this week for this team to be successful. And like we said at the start, that 1-0 mentality, that's all that matters. We are focused on this right now. Um, you know, we, again, we have, we have the ability, we have the talent. It's putting it together and becoming more disciplined with the course. And that starts with us as a staff, how we lead that. And it even starts off the field because the off the field leads to the on the field. How we create the discipline off the field within the facility, within the meeting rooms, within how we practice, we're able to then grow it. We have the ability, we have the players, and we have the opportunity to put it together now as we go into conference play um, with the right mix. And now we talk about it every week. You're going to see different defenses from week to week. You're going to see that. What calls for one week, you know, there's maybe opportunities early in the game last week. We knew there was going to be an adjustment and a lot of bodies come to line of scrimmage. Bush did a nice job creating some things and TG hit some passes, you know, beyond the second level of the defense that we were expecting to see. That helped us start fast last week. Okay, what will it be this week? And how do we get ourselves off to a fast start? And then, of course, it's the consistency as we've talked about as we adjust and we go through the game and we're able to use the players we have, the personnel we have. And we've seen, um, we've seen uh, at the quarterback position what we have. We've seen at the running back position. We've seen guys step up and grow. Seen guys step up at the wide receiver position. We've seen guys step up at the tight end position. With Riley out last week, Matt Louder did an awesome job both in the run game and had an explosive catch. Um, and obviously at the running back position as well with, with what not only Ashton's been able to do, but, uh, but Breezy. Coach, this, this week in practice, looking at the two quarterbacks, what will you specifically be looking for? And would it, will it, could it be different with each quarterback because they are so different? You know what they are? They are, Mike, but at the same time, we want to create a consistency for the offense. And there is, there is things that we did at the end of the game when TG wasn't in there that we want him to be able to do and we expect him to be able to do, you know, from a pass game standpoint and a drop back pass. Okay, so on a typical week, as we all know, the first team quarterback gets the majority of the reps, you know, somewhere along the lines of 80 to 20. We're going to push into that just a little bit to give and know, to give ourselves a great idea of the mix of which we can, because we got two guys that are capable. It's, it's nothing against TG. There are some things that TG needs to do a better job of. We've discussed those and he's very well capable of doing those things and we fully support him on those things. There's Nobody in this building wants TG to be more successful, you know, than the coaching staff, his teammates, and as well as if Mad Dog gets his opportunity to get in there. That's the awesome part about it. So we will, um, you know, in terms of the game plan and what, what plays certain people, it's going to be consistent. There might be a few um, that are specific, but otherwise we want to see the efficiency out of both guys, and obviously we'll proceed from there on. But that is what we're going to go off of and being able to, to see uh, you know, the right dosage within the game and being able to play two quarterbacks is the efficiency throughout the course of the week. And just to clarify, you do, regardless of what happens this week, you do plan to use two quarterbacks on Saturday? Yes. You kind of said that Talon, through the last couple of weeks, has shown really good things in practice, and for whatever reason, it hasn't translated to the game. How, how do you guys, as a coaching staff, evaluate a quarterback competition with a guy who is doing all the right things in practice, and then maybe sometimes it doesn't translate to the There's game. There's certain things in practice that always show up, you know, in the game. That's that's the case. That's why we practice. How we do it in practice, especially later in the week. Earlier in the week, you're facing a new structure on defense. You're facing a new structure on offense. At this point, we've seen, you know, a variety of things um, on both sides of the ball from our opponents. But each and every week, there's still subtle changes and adjustments. You know, there might be checks at the line of scrimmage based off of certain looks that a defense is giving you, whether it's a check, a run-to-run check, whether it's a, a run-to-pass check, a pass-to-run check. There's those certain things that come up every week that we need to be more consistent with and have that carryover 
from where we're at in the middle to the end of the week and into the game, and then the operation of how we communicate those things. What was the initial thought process in putting Taylor in, or in putting uh, Mad Dog into that third series? We went into the game knowing we were going to give him the series. Again, like we said, uh, we're we're working on building the depth of our team. We're going into conference play now. It's 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 to accomplish our goal. You know, like we said, we're one and zero in conference play, and we're going to take a one and zero uh, approach each and every week. And so to prepare ourselves and know. Um, our personnel, we know our personnel, we know what we have, we know what we have at all positions. Um, good or bad or indifferent, it's, we've had guys step up because of injuries and, and we've gotten to see a lot of different guys play. Now it's time to put it all together as we're working in conference play. You Is may there... not have decided this yet, but do you have, will there be a set number of um, um, no, drives each or will it be we a situation? Decided, yeah, we haven't decided that yet. What did you learn from going through a quarterback competition last year that's influencing you this season? Again, like last year has nothing to do with this year and the two quarterbacks we have right now. I mean, we both these guys are doing some things really, really well. When you talk, when you talk about you know, seeing him practice day in, day in, day, is, is there, is it, is it just the confidence piece? Like what, what helps like really push that or facilitate that? Yeah, there's no question and that's what we've been working to grow at as we move along here throughout the course of the season is being able to, when we get done with one game, what did we do well? How did that stem from our preparation? What are the things that we want to get better at, that we need to get better at? And what are the things we're going to implement from a preparation standpoint, not just on the film, but the meeting room? Then it obviously goes into, what do we have the confidence? What are we efficient at running? You know, Again, this is a personnel-driven game. We've got to implement the things into a game plan that's going to help us win, to help us be successful on both sides of the ball, but ultimately it's got to fit our personnel as well. How does Maddox make this offense different on game day? In terms of his ability, I mean, we saw at the end of the game there, Mike, we saw what he's able to do, you know, within the pass game. Uh, he's shown to do that in practice. There's a reason why we decided to make that decision at that point. We felt like based off of what we had seen in practice, um, not only, uh, you know, through the course of fall camp, and into the, the season, um, Maddox runs the two-minute drill against the first team's defense and, and to see his efficiency and what he is able to do and his, um, the way he's able to operate. We being able to, like I said, we know our personnel. Um, he's very consistent as he goes through his progressions. He was able to get the ball out on time. And um, when we had some shot plays, we were first and we got a penalty to go first and 15 down there in the red zone at the end. And, we call a play that, you know, it's a deeper progression route and the defense handled it and he went quickly to check down and went from first first and fifteen to a touchdown. Those are the things that he's shown to be able to do. When, when we uh, you kinda of mentioned the ball out on time, we didn't mention it after the game. Um, how kind of a simple question, but how important is that uh, not only to help receivers come you know get open at times, but we saw when Maddox was in there, there's there's a lot of yards after the catch too because it's not like you know when the ball is coming out. Yeah, so there's a, there's a big piece of that too. You know, it's it's staying it's staying within uh, time in the pocket. It starts with our feet, right, and then our eyes as we work through a progression. But then Max did a really good job of uh, not only putting the ball where it needed to be throughout the progression, but putting it on the wide receivers where they can get some yards after the catch. Um, and the wide receivers, the running backs, proved that they can do that. And we were able to do that too. Um, again, Matt Louder uh, had a, one of the most explosive plays we had this year uh, from the tight end position. And TG did a phenomenal job putting it on him. And, and you know, when the defense, uh, when TG was in there and the defense was putting a lot of numbers in the box, which we were expecting, they had not done that on film in their previous games. We were expecting to get that. TG did a great job handling and taking what the defense gave us on the perimeter. We've hit a few. Uh, deep throws over the second level of the, of, the, of the defense because of how they were working towards the line of scrimmage. They're both doing good things, okay? That is the benefit for us. Yeah, we will not let um, the fact that, again, we've used two quarterbacks here at Boise State before to give us the best advantage to do the best offense we can, given our team the best opportunity to win. And again, we've had conversations with the guys on our team, um, let alone the two quarterbacks, and, Everybody supports each other and wants to do what's best. Um, I mean, 
really just excited to get on the field and use both of them. We spent a lot of time talking about Talon's X's and O's from the outside. Um, he doesn't look like he's playing with as much confidence as he has in the past. On the inside, how do you approach that? Well, I think uh, it's, there's been things that we've done consistent from last year to this year. Um, there's things that we've done better. Again, I went into some of the things uh, that we have done a really good job with at the line of scrimmage because it's not just when that ball snapped. There's a lot that goes on prior to that ball being snapped, and he has grown, you know, in that area, which gives us an advantage to get ourselves you know, to the line of scrimmage and get ourselves in the best play for the look that, that is given. Now, that's not the whole offense, right? But there are things in the game plan that involve those decision making, um, you know, preparing to make those decisions at the line of scrimmage. Uh, from the standpoint of uh, his efficiency in the pass game, it's consistent. You know, we're working to build that forward and expand, you know, into the dr drawback pass game more. Um, but the consistency of where we are at last year and through, we track all this from spring ball through fall camp, where his numbers are right now are similar to what they have been. Uh, defensively, obviously, you know, hasn't been quite up to the, the standard defensively. And you said after the game, yeah. I, I, I a couple of times. I mean, do you, do you need to have a bigger role in terms of the play calling? Or what do you do personally, I guess, with the defense struggling like it is? There's no question. And, and I take responsibility for it. I take responsibility for everything. How I can impact, how we can impact, okay, our players is the most important thing. The structures we create, um, you know, a big part of that too is how we can develop the depth, how we're continuing to develop the depth of our defense. We've, we've played a lot of guys this year, which is great because these guys are getting experience. We've talked about the guys that have stepped up. It starts with me creating a higher level of consistency of how we're executing from first down to third down to fourth down. That's where it starts for me. And making sure that we are emphasizing the proper things that it needs to, to the, the proper things that need to be emphasized to be a successful defense. We know what those things are. We've done it before. Each and every year, it's a different look. It's new players. It's what do they do well? What aren't we doing well? And to be honest with you, we have all the ability. We believe in our players. And it's about finding a level of consistency that starts with our discipline and how we play the fundamentals and techniques that make the scheme. Um, I'm excited to get back on the practice field. We're gonna have a huge challenge this week. We're playing, again, another very good quarterback that is a multi-year starter, that has length at wide receiver, and is shown to be able to push the ball down the field, okay? So here comes the next challenge. How will we grow this week? How will we grow as a defense in the entirety of how we are up front at the line of scrimmage and how we execute within the back end and how we bring it together? Maybe you just kind of touch on it there, Angel. When it comes to your defense, and is, is there anything that has to happen and you hope it snowballs from there to better results? Is it limiting big plays, shutting down the run, pressure? I mean, is, is there anything that is yeah. a constant that can help it snowball? It, it always, it will never change. The things that come down to eliminating explosive plays always starts with the communication and the pre-snap being on the same page. It always starts with that. We gave up a touchdown last week because we didn't communicate well and we, uh, we had an error in the boundary side of our coverage that allowed for a touchdown run. We can fix those things. That starts with us and making sure that we fully understand that our players fully understand what we are doing and when we are doing it, and then the communication on the field, how we set that. The second thing is always about our eye control and how our eyes put us in position, put our feet, put our body in position to execute and win our one-on-one -on -one with the fundamentals and techniques. And this game can become very, very complicated. You can run whatever schemes you want on defense, the bottom line is it comes back to those. We say it all the time, the fundamentals and techniques make the scheme. And we do have the players that have the ability to execute the fundamentals and techniques that have shown to do that. We as coaches got to create an environment where it's an expectation and a standard and our players, again, we had a great, we had a great meeting yesterday, we had a great discussion and we broke off into position meeting rooms and we had a great practice where that is going to be the priority as we move forward. Um, this game can become very complicated. We can look for all these, what is the answer? What is the answer? It is very simple. Playing great defense starts with 
discipline and mentality. That's where it started. You've, you've, that's kind of been the similar message for the last five weeks. Where has kind of been the disconnect in terms of, of the coaches and then, you know, getting the players to, to buy into that? So, I mean, you know, regardless, to the contrary, we've actually did things better. We tackled pretty well, yeah. I mean, in the, considering, you know, what we were talking about the week before. So is it going to change overnight? Growth takes time. Okay, we've got young players and we've seen certain players do a better job and play better. Shea Aladipo played really well last week. Okay, let's talk about that. Let's talk about how much better Shea played last week. Let's talk about what Marco did last week. Let's talk about Zion and how Zion stepped in there. And now in, in uh, absence of Tubner, how Zion has done a better job, you know, and, and, and just learning, growing his his urgency and his focus and how he's coming because his want to, to do his job better and grow each and every week. It's not going to happen overnight, but it will happen because his team is committed to doing that. When you look back at the film on the, the block skill goal, what did, what did you see there? Yeah, so, I mean, again, it comes down to the same things. We didn't handle um, our, our technique, you know, on the right side of our um, field goal team the way we should have, and it cost us. Um, that's something that we, as a coaching staff, have to be on throughout the course of the game so that uh, in those critical moments, you know, we don't, we talk about all the time, special teams going to change the game. Previous week, we won the game by three points. That could have been the deciding factor in this game as well. But it comes down to the consistency and the execution of, of how we're operating on the field goal team. Um, Jonah's proven to be uh, very consistent. And it's our job to make sure we protect and give him the opportunity to do so. You've been a uh, head coach now for three years. And uh, when it comes to making decisions about fourth downs or whether you punt, whether you kick, do you let analytics influence those decisions in any way? Uh, we, we let the, the analytics of what our team does well influence those decisions. We do have, um, we do take the course of what analytics say, but we adjust it to what our team does well. You mentioned their quarterback for Darrell. I know you haven't faced him at Boise State. I don't know right. if you faced him at any of your previous stops, but what have you what have you seen from him? And you know, obviously a ten thousand yard career pass, or you know, is, yeah, he's got to be able. So to we haven't played against him, but being in the same conference, we've got to see him play a fair amount. You know, and being able to see what he's able to do through the air, he's a very accurate passer. Um, as we talked about, he's got wide receivers that have shown to be very productive, but he's a strong runner too. He extends plays with his feet. He's not a guy that has to get out of the pocket, but he can get out of the pocket and make uh, throws on the run. He's a guy that is able to extend plays, you know, into run plays that aren't designed that way. And he's shown to do that week in and week out. What about San Jose's defense? What sticks out there? Well, uh, they, they've done a really good job, you know, in the, in the past game that they showed. I mean, they're number 13 in the nation when it comes to their pass defense. Um, their run defense, you can look at stats and all that. They've done a good job. They played Air Force. You know what that is. Um, so we're looking at a defense that this well, overall a team that has played, you know, their opponents are 18 and 2. So they've, they've had a challenging schedule. And you turn on the film and look at what they've done. Um, and you take the score out of it. And you take the numbers out of it. And you see a team that is going to come in here um, with the ability and capability to be successful. They've shown that on, on, on the field already this year. They've got a defensive front that's going to play physical. Uh, their secondary um, on film looks to be one of the better ones that we're going to play. With, uh, with Shea, what is um, the key kind of thing you have seen in his overall kind of attitude, if you will? Um, Shea Oladipo, you're talking about? Yeah. You know what? Um, there's things that, uh, you know, we know that Shea could have did better in a, in a couple weeks ago, you know, things that we want to come out, and he did that last week. And that's why, yeah, we got to be better overall. It's a big, big picture. We have to be. There's no question about that. But there's guys like him that stepped up last week um, and practiced like it. It took the urgency and the detail. And that's all we need is we need guys to keep growing that way. You know, we need guys that, that take that, take the approach, come here every single day, like, I'm going to get better and do my job better this week than I did last week us as coaches too. And that's what happens. I mean, Shea made a few plays last week, whether it was in coverage and or 
his tackle in the open field on the tailback when we brought heavy pressure and he got out for anybody would have been a very difficult tackle and because of the things that we asked about last week what we're going to do to fix and drill tackling the way he executed and took the grass and took all the space and ended up with the proper leverage and, and the proper finish that was awesome to see that was a big time moment for everybody knowing how hard we worked on that um, which could have been very easily, if it wasn't executed, could have been an extremely explosive play for them. This time last week, you were kind of raving about the tight ends and, and their block. And, you know, this week you were able to get Matt involved and caught all three passes. You just, you know, just what, what can he bring to the pass game? Yeah, I mean, we, we have two guys that are capable. You know, Riley's, Riley's healthy. We got Riley, we got Matt. Um, Matt has shown, uh, <laughs> I mean, that. Matt, as we've gone through this season, he just continues to get better. And, um, he obviously was involved in the pass game. Uh, he's shown the ability to create separation. But when you turn on the film and you pay attention to some of those blocks in the run game, I mean, you get pretty fired up about what he does for the team in terms of handling his job at the line of scrimmage. You obviously know the fan base is pretty passionate and obviously have had a lot of success around here. I mean. There's some, some unhappy fans are a little bit uneasy, I guess, with, with what's going on right now. What, what would be your message, I guess, to, to the fan base with the, where the program's at and, and, and you know what, what's ahead? Yeah, there's no question, and I get it. I'm, this is my brotherhood, too. We didn't accomplish what we wanted to in the non-conference. That's the bottom line. There's no excuses. There's nothing. But what we do have is an ability to grow forward because our goal is still sitting right in front of us. We are one to know in conference play. We're going to take that approach every single week. We have the ability in this room. We will grow it from our experiences. And each and every week, we're going to go forward from here. Um, again, we got a team that has uh, been willing to grow and learn. We just got to do it more consistently. Um, how our leadership will step in and lead these things, how our coaches will step in and lead these things, will give us the opportunity to do it one week at a time. And as we step into conference play, uh, that is the most important thing. It's, it's gonna be exciting to see what our offense is uh, are capable of doing, what we're building off of what we've done, you know, and then obviously I'm excited to see how our defense grows. I'm excited. Like, yeah, have we been the, the standard on defense? We have. Doesn't mean that we can't grow into that doesn't mean that we can't become that as we work in the conference play. We're going to play challenging teams. We played a challenging non-conference schedule. The Mountain West is no different. The Mountain West is going to pre uh, present challenges week in, week out. When you went back and evaluated your personal thought process and how everything went, and there was a lot of talk after the game on the fourth and one decision, um, you said it was pretty simple. You didn't get the look you wanted, and you kicked. I mean, do you... Uh, it's easy to second guess now with how the field goal got blocked, but do you look back and say you would have done anything differently there? Or? Yeah, we're not, we're not going to second guess it. I mean, we went into it to look. I'll be honest, the clock's running down. We're trying to get the look to make sure that we're putting our team in the right position. And um, we didn't get, we weren't able to see to make sure we had the look we wanted. I'm not, again, I'm not going to second guess that. What did, how many points did we win by the week before? 13. How many? Three. With, with, uh, Kind of, it almost feels silly to ask you actually the most physical performance, but you know, this Kansas State State's using space a lot of the time, but you look at what Ashton did last week. Is that the most physical game he's had to play with, with the Bronco yet? Yeah, I mean, like we talk about, <laughs> defenses are going to do what they need to do from week to week in terms of what they want to work to take away from the offense. They put a lot of bodies in the box. They put a lot of bodies in the box, which creates opportunities elsewhere you know and we've got to be prepared for that each and every week the other teams are watching film too they're going to see what we've done successfully right but within that too um i'm excited to see how we mix it up with uh you know the variety of things that we can do in the run game um had a little heavy dosage of too much of our inside runs uh, in the last week. And when we adjusted and um, worked to some of the other things in, in the run game, we got a little bit more space. And so uh, as we work from week to week to see uh, how teams are going to play our offensive front, we have the ability to, to put ourselves in a position to be successful.